This may be the real test, folks. This video is not sponsored by any of the companies mentioned. Hi, Shanna Rowe Jackson here from Caution Artists at Play, and welcome to part two of my review of the Canson Plain Air Mixed Media Art Boards. If you didn't see my previous video, you may want to go watch that because it has some information about these boards. And in that video, I tried out colored pencil, oil pastel, wax pastels, and Derwent ink tents on this art board. Basically, I am trying to see just how much these boards can take. These are a nice thick board with a smooth kind of surface. The texture isn't very deep as you can probably see here, but it's just enough to grip certain media. And they are made to be used with all kinds of different materials from wet to dry. And so I am somebody who works in a lot of different materials and I want to see just how much this surface can handle. So this is part two where I will be trying acrylic, gouache, watercolor, and water-based markers on this surface. So yeah, let's see what we can do. In the previous video, I kind of did one large art piece just sectioned it off to do the different materials. In this one, I think I'm just gonna do some like little mini landscapes or something in each material just to see how it works and see how this board can handle these different supplies. Okay, so starting out, I think I'm going to start with acrylic and then I'll go to gouache, watercolor, and marker. Let's see just how much wet material these boards can handle. Okay, so starting off with the acrylic side, the first thing I decided to do was to tape it, not only to protect the edges of the square that I'm working in, but also because I wanted to see how well this surface took the tape. It is an artist tape, so it is low tack, and I use it for pretty much everything. It's acid free, and so it's a it's made for this purpose. And I will show you later how that went. And then I just went in and decided to do kind of a gradient. I am working with a variety of different kinds of acrylic. I am using some of the High Flow by Golden, some of the So Flat Matte acrylic by them. I'm also using some Holbein acrylic gouache, which is technically an acrylic. Um, it's It says gouache in the name, but all acrylic gouache is technically acrylic because it's acrylic binders. But anyway, and you'll see me come in with some acrylic markers and yeah, just a huge variety, medium bodied just to see how much this can take. I have to say, I did have pretty good faith in the fact that acrylic would work well on this surface. All you really need for acrylics is something sturdy to put them on, but they'll paint on pretty much anything. And so with this one, I am not at all surprised that it worked up so well. And now you can see I'm coming in with a Molotow and I'm just working on some trees there, trying to get some detail. The Paint wasn't completely dry underneath, so I did have some difficulty at first, but that was mainly just because I thought the paint was drier than it was before I came in, so the marker had dug into it. And I used some Liquitex professional markers, some Molotow markers, and I think the other one was a Montana, just to try the different size nibs and the different kinds of acrylic on it. And it all worked really well. So, so far, this second part is starting off really well. The acrylics worked like a dream on the surface, and I think it will be a great addition, especially for later on if I decide to ever use acrylics with my mixed media work on this surface. So I'm very excited about that. And I think it would be great for plain air painting if you want to bring your acrylics out and bring this out as well. Something else that I like to know is that I liked working on this while it was on the pad. I think that would be great for plain air so you don't have to worry about your piece blowing away. It's just sturdier. However, if you don't want to remove it, which you can absolutely remove the board from the pad when you're working on it, it's certainly sturdy enough to be worked on without being attached to the rest of the pad. But if you don't want to remove it for the reasons that I stated, I suggest putting tape around the edges of the other boards just to protect them. Just be careful when you're using tape and I'll show you why I'm saying all of this. Oh, 
Ah, oh, damn. Damn, damn, damn. Okay. So, I just finished my acrylic portion. And the tape test failed. <laughs> it did so well down here. And then I got to this last point and it tore into the paper. And this is artist tape. This is low tech artist tape. So, and I was being careful. So the paper may not really like tape. Also, what the hell did I do here? Like I totally, I taped it and I went right over the tape, which I'm not going to be too mm, picky about because this is my gouache side. Gouache can be pretty opaque, but still like what the hell was I thinking? I don't even know. I don't even know. I was just painting along, minding my own business and not paying attention, I guess, because my intention was to only go as far as the tape and I painted over it anyway into my gouache portion even though I knew not to so this the second part of the review is turning out really well but okay let's talk about how it handled acrylic it handled it really really well but I want to mention these boards are their plain air series so you're supposed to be able to bring them out and have a nice solid form to paint on however if you leave it on the pad and you paint back and forth over it it will go on to the next page and it's actually kind of sticking and just to clarify i'm not complaining that i got paint over the edge i figured i would i was not being careful but i wanted to note it because if you're messy like me and you get paint all down your edges it can seep over the edge onto the next panel so that's just something to think about ahead of time but even this like it seeped onto the next page and sunk in so I just wanted to note that. However, the surface took acrylic really well. I'm, I'm really happy with how well it took acrylic. Um, I'm going to move on to gouache next, and I'm going to hope and pray. I mean, this part is kind of damaged, so I'm going to not factor that in. And actually, I'm going to paint over the damage and see how well it does. And gouache is fairly opaque so I'm actually going to use my gouache pans which is what I have available to me right now the Caran d'Ache gouache pans but yeah as far as the surface I really really like it I used the so matte or so flat matte acrylics by golden I also used high flow by golden I used some acrylic gouache which is basically matte acrylic it's not actually a gouache it's actually acrylic that's what acrylic gouache is and I also used some system 3 medium body as well as a variety of paint markers just to kind of get a feel for it and it took it all really really well other than the fact that um, I painted right over the tape <laughs> All right, so moving on to the next segment, we're going to get into the gouache. Okay, so before I start, I want to mention I did tape it again because I want to see if this was just a fluke. <laughs> Here's praying. Usually you can tape over acrylic and it won't lift acrylic. So I'm going to see if it lifts it from this surface. I'm going to put my acrylics away, but this is the gouache that I'm using. It is the Caran d'Ache gouache, gouache Studio set of 15. I love these. You can tell. They are well loved. I have used them a lot. So this is the set that I am using. Again, I am in the process of redoing my studio. A lot of my supplies are in an area that I can't get to readily. So I was not able to get to my blush. But this is what I'm using. And this uses slightly more water. So it'll be interesting to see. All right, let's keep this train moving on to the gouache gouache. And I had pretty high expectations of this medium as well because it is a pretty versatile medium and it's pretty opaque. It's not necessarily as tough as acrylic, but it definitely can paint over a lot of different surfaces. And 
I am really excited about how well it went down on this surface. This might be my new favorite surface for gouache because you need kind of something sturdy for gouache anyways. You don't want anything too flexible because gouache can crack, especially if you have thick layers of it. And so I think this is a great surface for it. And as you can see, I was able to paint over those acrylic marks <laughs> and that spot that was damaged when I first put the gouache down, it really darkened up that spot. But as the gouache dried to its beautiful matte finish, you could barely see the damage in the paper. And because this surface is so thick, even though there was some damage to the surface of it, when it filled up with paint, there was still enough surface underneath to make up for it. And you can barely tell that there was damage done to the surface. So, so that is something to be said for this surface in general. And as I mentioned, I am using gouache pans by Caran d'Ache and it works really well. And I had to add quite a bit of water to reactivate my gouache as you usually do with pans and the extra water did not seem to hurt this surface at all. So I'm very excited about that and I'm really looking forward at this point to trying watercolor because that's going to be the most watery of all. But I am really, really happy with this surface for gouache. Definitely an A plus as far as gouache goes on this surface. Now for the moment of truth, I am being very careful this time peeling up that tape. I have it sped up. It was I was pretty slow about it. And then I cleaned up my edges. It did not pull up the acrylic and it did not damage the paper this time. So I think if you're really careful, you can use tape on this surface. Okay, the gouache portion is done. I really enjoyed myself with that. As you can see, the damage of the paper doesn't even really show from when we pulled the tape from the last time. I'm really, really excited at how well it covered it. And I'm really excited at how well I was able to cover the acrylic stains that went across there, which I I figured I'd be able to because gouache is pretty opaque, but I'm still like, why did I even do that? I guess it worked out because it was an added test for, not necessarily for the surface, but for the gouache itself, I guess. Worked really, really well. I am liking it so far. And there is not, let's see if I can zoom out a little more. Not a lot of warping going on so far. This part is kind of warping up a little on the bottom. But so far, it's not that bad. I am really, really happy. So we're at the halfway point. Now we are going to move on to watercolor and to water-based markers. And the water-based markers are gonna be <laughs> the real test, I think. Um, I have pretty good faith in the fact that the watercolor will work fine since the gouache and acrylic did, but this is probably gonna be using a lot more water than I did with these two, so we will see. However, the marker, that's gonna be the true test. So, stay tuned. Okay, so now we're getting really sloppy and wet. I did not bother using tape this time. I wet the whole square with water because I knew that when I did that, once I dropped my actual color in, it would stay within that square. And I basically just went in wet and wet and I used some paper towel to blot out my clouds and I don't have any information about sizing about this paper. I don't know if they use any sort of watercolor sizing or anything like that. It does feel more like a cellulose kind of paper. It doesn't it, there's nothing about it being cotton or anything like that that I could find on the pad of paper itself. And so it didn't absorb the same way a cotton paper would. I am curious to try their watercolor boards down the line and see if they differ from this. And I also didn't really get the chance to try my fun effects that I like to get to use. This was pretty much, I just went in with wet and wet watercolor, got my details. It lifted really well. It didn't absorb too much. It stayed right on top of the surface. So it allowed a lot of reworking. And I am using Holbein watercolors for this. And so I actually, I'm really impressed with the amount of water it took. Okay, my watercolor one is done. It took watercolor really, really well. It's not nearly as warped as I thought it was going to be. You can see it's kind of separating there from the one below. 
but it's really not too bad. I feel like I could lay it under something and flatten it out. I didn't use the tape this time, as I mentioned in the little voiceover, um, because I knew that I could control somewhat the flow of the paint by putting water down and I wanted to work wet into wet just to see how much it could handle and so that's what I did there I'm really really happy with it I didn't try some of the experimental things that I usually do but I did lift and it lifted really easily the only place that it really started to pill up or have any issues is where I kind of overworked a spot where I got green in the sky that was to be expected I don't think it was any worse than most papers so yeah, I'm really, really happy with this so far. I think later on down the line, I might do a piece fully in watercolor, and that's where I will get more experimental and add salt to it or add alcohol to get the blooms. But I do feel like it would work really easily. Actually, there's still a wet spot there. I wonder if one of my favorite techniques to create blooms in watercolor is to use rubbing alcohol with it. And some papers don't do that very well. So I want to see if this allows me to do that. I guess that's not as wet as I was thinking it was. I know some paper does not allow me to do it. I can't do it on Arches rough paper. And it's not separating the way it normally would. But I'm sure the salt technique would still work. Because I think that it stays on the surface long enough to absorb into the salt. Um, the pigment, that is. I think the pigment stays on the surface long enough to absorb. Future Shanna here with an update. I just wanted to show you I did a fun little abstract piece here so that I could test out the watercolor tricks that I normally do with the alcohol and the salt. And as you can tell, the alcohol works great on this surface when it's still wet to create those fun blooms. And I put some salt in and that seems to work as well. We don't keep regular salt in the house, so I had to use chili salt. So you may see little flakes of chili as well, but it worked. And I just wanted to show you that the board definitely warped a lot more during this demonstration because I had to use a ton more water. So here's a picture of the way it looks and how warped it got. But it flattened out a lot on its own, just naturally while it was drying. I was really excited about that. And I think you could probably put it under some books to flatten it more if needed. And also, here is a picture of the dry piece now that I have scanned it in to show you what those effects look like once it's dry. So yeah, we're going to keep on going. Our last one, this one's going a lot quicker than the other test, and I am having a blast. So on to the water-based markers. Wish me luck. Okay, so moment of truth, folks. This is the medium that I was the most worried about. Water-based markers are very finicky when it comes to surface. However, I only ever usually work in water-based markers because alcohol markers by nature are not light fast. So I just don't invest in alcohol markers. Some of them can be pricey. And if I can't sell my original artwork to me, it's not worth it. So I am not the person to come to and ask if alcohol markers work on this because I have some somewhere, but they're buried in the studio somewhere. So I have to make do with water-based markers when I use markers. And surface is very important with water-based markers. And as you can tell here, right off the bat during blending, the paper did start to pill. Now, that is not an insult towards this paper. That is um, very common with water-based markers, which is why I usually use them on panel. If you watch my channel, you've seen me do numerous marker works on um, ampersand and caustic board. However, I am very curious about the Canson illustration boards that they're they're the same thing as this but they're called illustration boards i want to try those as well because they do advertise them for markers and i don't know if it would be more of a you know alcohol-based marker surface or if it would work with water-based markers as well so eventually i will probably i'll probably end up with all these boards eventually and you'll see reviews when i do but that being said 
these would still work for line work. These would still work in conjunction with other media on this surface. You could still do some expressive mark making. Where it becomes an issue is during blending because then you're really working the paper with that nib. The water's sinking into it and each time you go to blend, it's just kind of pulling up the fibers of the paper. And again, that is very common with water-based markers, which is why I'm not really that bummed about it. And honestly, the texture that it created is kind of cool and it works really well with the subject that I chose for this little landscape. Phew, that was so much quicker than the last video as far as how long it took me. I just sat here and did all four of these in one sitting. I'm going to say, I'm pretty proud of myself. I didn't have references for any of this. This all just came out of my mind. Super fun. And this is the type of thing that I live for. This is why I love to have YouTube. This is why I like to do art because I love to work with so many different materials and doing these pieces, both this one and the one I did in the last video, has been so much fun because I've gotten to play with a variety of supplies and it has definitely kept me engaged. So let's talk about this marker portion. It actually worked a lot better than I thought it would. I, I'm pretty impressed. Will I be switching to this full time for my marker work? Probably not. I like to work with the Faber-Castell Pit Artist pens. They're brush pens. They are India ink-based and water-based. And so water-based markers in general have a hard time blending on a lot of different surfaces because they will tear up your paper. And so this did pill the paper a little bit. It kind of gave it that felt texture. But it didn't eat right through it because this, again, is a nice sturdy board. So it held up really well to the abuse considering. However, for the type of work I do, I think I will be sticking to encaustic board, which is what I like to use with my water-based markers. That being said, if you are somebody who likes to work with gouache and watercolor and then use markers on top for details, I don't think that would be any sort of issue. I think this is going to work fine for line art or anything like that if you're using something like a Micron pen or a Pit pen, which are water-based. I think you will do, it'll handle it just fine for any type of line work or any type of, you know, just finishing touches and things like that. Where it becomes an issue and where any type of surface becomes an issue with water-based marker is when you're trying to blend. And so, of course, it did kind of come up a little bit, but it almost works. Like, this look almost works for the subject that I chose with these, you know, kind of nasty little clouds in here. I anticipated that I would be kind of getting this texture in there, so I kind of went with this look purposely. So... Yes, you can definitely use water-based markers on this surface. Is it going to be the ideal surface? Not necessarily. It really just depends on what you're using them for. So, in conclusion, I love this board. I had so much fun doing these two projects. These as well as the one from last week where I used colored pencil, oil pastel, wax pastel, which is essentially crayons, and ink tents. So if you didn't see that video last week, I did one big project using those four things. Again, I had split it like this. So go check that out so you can see how I feel about that. But I can kind of give you an overall, since this is the second video, I definitely will be using acrylic on this surface again. Love it for gouache. It was absolutely perfect for gouache. And even where there was some damage, I was able to paint over it with the gouache. And you cannot even tell that there was damage there from when I pulled tape up. And that was something else I tested. I used my artist tape. It's low tack. I use this for everything. And it did tear up the paper a little bit. So you just want to be really careful when you are working with tape to tape your edges and things like that. But all in all, definitely love acrylic and gouache on this. I will be using it for watercolor again as well. And I think this is a great mixed media surface. It is strong. It is thick. It did warp a little bit because I put it through the ringer and I used a lot of water, especially in the watercolor part. I went wet into wet at first. And so it definitely warped. You can kind of see how it's not staying level with the rest of them. And then also another tip, if you are going to use this for plain air, you may want to tape your edges as well because it did go on to the next page. 
of course I was being messy with it I wanted to see how well it worked and if it would go on to things here so like it did kind of seep on to the edge of this next page and you don't want them to stick together either I keep saying page but they're actually boards and they are they're nice and thick wonderful wonderful very sturdy takes a lot of media I am really, really excited about this. I'm going to be able to use a lot of different materials on this. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you next week. I hope you found this helpful um, because I had so much fun doing this. And also, I did want to mention, I think this would work well for pencil as well, just regular graphite pencil. I may have to do just a piece trying that out. I don't think something like charcoal or soft pastel would work. I don't think it would grip to the surface enough. However, I do think it would probably work fine for pencil, but I haven't tried that yet. If that's something that you'd like to see, if you'd like me to try pencil on this surface next, please let me know in the comments below. Also, let me know what is your favorite from this one? Which one did you like the best? Because I'm pretty excited about my little mini imaginary landscapes. All right. Thank you again. I will see you next week. You have a great day. Bye. If you found value in this video, please feel free to hit the like button, hit subscribe, and share so others can see it as well. Thank you.